In this video, we're going to look at what an inclusion plot is and how you can use it to judge the beauty of your diamond. Understanding how to read a GIA inclusion plot is probably not going to be on your list of priorities when you're starting to investigate diamonds. But, for the more advanced viewer, it's something that's worth understanding, and more crucially, considering the mistakes that people make judging beauty versus what's given in the report. I've gathered together an interesting collection of GIA graded diamonds. I'm going to investigate the plots to see how this relates to the actual appearance of a stone. The first diamond is a pretty simple 3 carat SI1 clarity D colour GIA graded diamond. Looking at the inclusion plot first, we can see that there's a crystal just off centre from the table, as well as the feather and needle. Now, when we examine this diamond under magnification, we can see that there's the characteristic black crystal inclusion just off centre from the table, and also the feather and needle style of inclusion are under the bezel facet and star facet pretty much as we'd anticipated them being. So, in this example, the GIA inclusion plot has allowed us to positively identify the inclusion of the diamond and also its location within the stone. Now let's look at a stone which perhaps isn't as straightforward. This particular diamond is a 2.14 carat SI1 clarity GIA graded stone and the characteristic style of inclusion is what's known as a twinning wisp. The twinning wisp inclusion is kind of like a growth parting in the diamond. Microscopic styles of inclusions collected along a difference in growth direction, similar to the hairline parting that many of you might experience. In this diamond, even though the twinning wisp runs straight through the centre of the table, it looks absolutely stunning under magnification. It's certainly the style of SI1 and SI2 clarity characteristics that are desirable. Having looked at one twinning wisp style of inclusion plot, Let's look at another similar diamond and see how it looks to the eye. In this particular inclusion plot, you still have twinning wisps. They're coming from the crown facets and entering the table. And instead of two large twinning wisps, there's five smaller ones. Let's switch over to the microscope view. Unfortunately, this diamond is pretty disappointing. Firstly, the twinning wisps are quite heavy, darker styles of inclusions and certainly not as clean under magnification as the previous example, despite the terms twinning wisp and also the plots being quite similar. So, two very similar plotting styles give two very different face-up appearances to the diamond. One of the other interesting details about the GIA plotting is that it will give you the table up perspective and also a table down perspective of the stone dependent upon whereabouts the position of the inclusion is. One of the details to consider is that if an inclusion runs along the face of the stone, it's identifiable along the plotting. However, if that inclusion runs down from the table into the pavilion and is visible from the table up perspective, it could be identified as a very small point and yet upon inspection is fairly large. In this inclusion plot, which is a 3 carat SI2 clarity GIA graded stone, the majority of the clarity characteristics are located underneath the crown facets and towards the outer edges of the stone. Having said that, there is one crystal which is located under the table and could cause us some problems, so let's have a look and see. We can see that the crystal from the plot is actually a, a pretty horrible black inclusion. Straight underneath the table, it's definitely not going to be eye clean. But, if we rotate the diamond to its side, now we get something quite interesting because of the diamond's optics. That singular black inclusion has been reflected internally over a dozen times, and it just looks awful. What you can see from the side isn't always apparent from the top of the stone either. This next diamond is a 2.5 carat SI1 clarity graded stone, with a collection of inclusions that are mainly underneath the table facet of the diamond. When you look at a close-up of the diamond, the feather is clearly visible. Certainly not the worst style of SI1, but then it's not the most desirable either. However, when we turn the diamond to the side view, there's a reflecting black inclusion that wasn't visible from above. 
So, what conclusions can we draw? Well, for one, the GIA's plotting is really helpful for identifying a diamond. We can have a look and see where any issues may be within the stone, but you can't use it to identify how beautiful a particular style of inclusion is going to be. This is why we inspect all of our stones, in addition to the GIA's grading, to identify any off-report factors that might be a problem. After all, you wouldn't want to spend a lot of money on a stone to have some sort of unidentified issue or visual flaw. Let's recap. Here are the things that you need to remember when picking your diamond. Inclusion plots are really helpful for identifying a stone, but not for judging the aesthetics of a particular inclusion. The plot shows a top and bottom view only, but the side view is also often important. Similar inclusions in GIA plots often look very different to the eye. When comparing a list of GIA reports, beware of the cheapest stones in the category and their beauty tends to be affected by off-certificate factors. For more information, please feel free to browse some of our other videos. Alternatively, give us a call or send an email. One of the team would be happy to help with your inquiry.